Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and tonight I'm making a DIY for you. Now part of this is I'm trying to organize my craft space Ooh. Um, and get all my crafty bits together and <clears throat> excuse me, I, you know, I started cross stitching and I've got all these little needles, they're everywhere. So we're gonna make a needle book and we just need a few supplies um i'm making this super basic um you know you can make it as fancy as you want those of you who i'm sorry i'm just tying off my floss those of you who quilt you can make it quilted i'm using felt because i just feel like felt is the easiest it doesn't require any finishing and it will last so let me go over some materials with you felt all the colors of felt. Um, I used a rotary cutter just to make my felt straight, but scissors work as well. Um, different embroidery floss. These are like 56 cents a color. I have black and white, but then I also felt like being a little extra tonight and I grabbed the gold. Um, not 56 cents. I think this was like $4.99. Um, I used a 40% off coupon, but, uh, yeah, so the gold metallic, it is DMC, but it's super sparkly and I'll show you what I'm using it for. And if you want to know that number is five, two, eight, two, if you're wanting to buy that, um, I have a needle threader, uh, because a rulers, a pencil to write on a uh, different kinds of needles. Um, I have my box of embellishments out, so you could hang charms, you could hang snowflakes, I have Santas, um, some Buckeye charms, any charms that you want on there. I picked out what I'm going to have, um, but these are just stitch markers is what I make when I'm knitting. Um, some type of a pattern, if you want a design on the front, I printed off a coffee cup because we all know actually I made a couple copies what I did the original image was this big and I just blew it up a couple times on my copier till I got the size that I wanted and then cut it out for a pattern you can do anything you want if you know how to embroider you can just embroider with floss on it I mean there's no really no right or wrong I'm just cleaning up while I'm talking to you because I got a mess going on here shocker um, I ended up using these little beads. This one's a heart. There's some letters. Um, like I said, a myriad of needles and a ruler, a bigger ruler if you're going to use your rotary cutter. Um, so yeah, let's get started and I will show you what I did. All right, we're back. Step one, like I said, you want your pattern. If you want to put a design on the front, I went with coffee cup because I just think it's super cute. Blew it up on my copier, cut it out. Um, I wanted a two colors, so I made two copies and I cut out the cardboard. I made that like a cardboard cover for the hand warmer or the coffee sleeve. And I cut this out of one color, um, just out of some white felt for the cup and the coffee sleeve out of this like camely color. You do you if you want to make flowers or whatever. So I got that all cut out. Then I measured it up and I decided, you know, how big do I want this book? And I just used my template and I said, okay, well, I'm going to make mine five inches tall by four inches wide. So what I did is I cut a piece of felt five inches tall but eight inches long because I'm folding it like a book. So this is not the exact dimensions, but this is what you're gonna get when you do that. And it gives you four pages, a front, a back, and then two pages to attach your needles to. I could have had as many pages as I want, but I felt like for this attempt, two middle pages is fine because they're fairly big in size. So that's what I started with. Here's my book, right? Laid it out. I took a smaller ruler 
I measured it up. I found the center and I just took my pencil and drew a line. Just like that. You probably won't see it too well, but the line is right here. And with these lined up as best I could, I stitched them together. And what I used, it's a book, here's the almost finished, it's a book binding stitch. And what that looks like, I'm gonna show you real quick, cause I have a piece of, uh, I'm pretty certain I have a uh, threaded needle around here somewhere. If not, I will thread one. Here, I've got this gold. So what, guys, I have thread everywhere because you need different needles for this. But, so uh, first off, you knot your end. I just licked my finger. You knot your end. And I buried my end in between the two. So I came up through here like that. And my end is just buried in, it'll be buried in the seam. To do a book binder, you go down. Oh, I lost my thread. You, well, anyway, you go down. And then when you come back up with your needle, you want to come in the middle here and kind of split that thread. And you need a sharp needle for this. But you want to come in the middle and it's hard on this metallic, but you can do it. I use the white. It's easier. But you want to, it's called railroading. There you go. You want to split that thread, come all the way up, and then you put it down again. So you're kind of looping it and you're connecting it. You're making a chain. That's what I did. You can sew it together any old way you want. The point is you sew the end together and you're making a book. And as soon as you, and it's all hand sewn. That's done. You now have pages. Once this was sewed together, I just laid it out because you're gonna get just like this. And I took my rotary cutter and I and a big ruler and I evened up all my sides. So that's done. Now I have a book, right? Done. If that's all you wanted, you're done. You can just store your needles in here. Now, I don't think I'm done because that's not what I wanted. Um, let me get some of this thread out of the way. So I had my design for the front. And again, you can use any type of applique, anything. I just created my own. So what I did is I cut out the white. This is just pinned on right now. And then I cut out the, um, this camel color to make like, you know, the, the sleeve that you get at Starbucks or wherever. And then I dug in my buttons. I forgot to tell you, you'll need... If you're doing it how I'm doing it, an old button or any button. I just found this like gold button and I don't know if it's too bright um, to see with the pearl. It's just an old, old fashioned button and I love it. And I just sewed it on. Nothing, nothing dramatic there. I just sewed the button on. I did all this stitching before I attached this on so that on my front piece, the only stitching you're going to see is me sewing this applique coffee cup down. That's it. Now people get fancy in these books and they put pockets for scissors and I don't need all that. I just need somewhere to store my needles. Um, up here, you know, you're gonna see where I stitched and I can put some fabric or whatnot up there. But the next step in this process is we need to sew this onto the front. It's pinned now, but I need to sew it on. And I'm gonna do a fun, maybe, I don't know, I need to find my sharp needle, cause this is definitely not it. Or maybe this is the sharp needle. Is this? Yeah, this is my sharp needle. I can use a needle threader, but the eye on here is a decent size. Actually, it's huge. So I'm just, and I am a knotter. Some people are, some people are not. I am a knot tier. Um, I just like things to be done. Now, here's how I'm gonna do this so that you don't see my knot in here. I start where I'm gonna start in this corner. And look what happens. My knot is now 
behind that piece. And then all I'm going to do is probably blanket stitch it around. And we did this before. So you pick up a piece out here. Oop, make sure that's under there. You come out here, you pick up a piece. And the big first stitch is always a little off, but you want it to stay lined up pretty neat. And then you catch that loop. See how that is? And again, that's my first stitch. So maybe it's not so pretty. And I'm not fussy about this. It's to hold needles. Catch a piece of each. Um, slide it through. And then catch that loop. And what will happen is you'll get this running blanket stitch. And you don't want to make it too tight. You'll get puckering and things. We'll do one more. And I'll have to get more thread out. And you just want to kind of make it even and have it run all the way around. And on the back side, all you're going to see are little stitches. So let me... Do give you one more shot and then I'm going to tack this all the way down and then I'll come back and show you how we're going to finish it off so easy but that's it just like that all the way around all right I'll be right back all righty we went all the way around my coffee cup I have one stitch left and we're going to hide the um floss so take this one last stitch oops I missed the loop okay so that's our last stitch we just want to kind of knot this off here on this little corner like one more stitch I didn't do the blanket portion and then but I'm going to get under this one thread here I'm just gonna knot it one more I'm gonna have to go back through this the wrong direction because I got my thread a little short hold on See here, ow, don't push on the end of the needle. Hold on, let me, I need to clip one of these little threads anyway. So we want to separate the two because I did this double. Oh, hold on one second. All right, so I got my knot and then all I'm going to do is trim this up real close down here. I'm trying to leave only one little thread, but that's not really going to work. So what you'll do, to hide your thread, <laughs> all this to say, to hide your thread, you feed this into here in between the two layers. See, it's not in behind. Pull it through up here. Trim it as close to the needle as you can get, and then just give, your, give it a tug. And then you'll, I'll just trim it. Kind of want to pull it taut, trim it close, and then watch. It's gone. That thread is buried up under here. So look at the back side. All you see is the outline there. So that's the front of our book. My book with the copy. Your book will have whatever. Then I took the gold floss and I just found the center back here and attached it. I whipped it around a couple times and tied it in a knot. And on the end, I took some beads and spelled my name, which I think will be backwards for you. But to me, it's my name, Lori. And this is how it's gonna lock. Just wrap it around your button a couple times. And now it's not gonna open it's a book. I got some little beads here. And then when I want to unwrap it, 
and then I can open it up and store my needles. And what you could do, and I might even do with some embroidery, is just put, you know, like, um, sharp needles, embroidery needles, cross stitch. Although, I'm pretty sure I know what I need. This page will be my cross stitching needles, and then this page will be embroidery and sharps. You can even put some on the back. Um, you definitely want to do a double, you know, make sure they're in there securely. But that friends is how I made a little needle book I hope you enjoyed and you make one too because I think these would be great gifts and I love taking an old idea of days gone by and making it a fresh glorified I glorified it and now I have a place to keep my needles and I can also attach on the front my um I have a magnet stitch minder that I'll put on here. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. Bye.